The pipeline operator, yes. Please tell me this made progress. Stage two, woo! We're making progress, guys. Wow, I never thought this was gonna get so far. JavaScript is embracing functional programming in the best possible way. As a big fan of FP and someone who doesn't like defining things all the time when I don't need to, I really like taking values and putting them through functions and then putting them through other functions and then putting them through other functions. I've talked so much about the pipes that I build as a developer from my database to my user, from interaction one to interaction two, from one component to another. I really like thinking in pipes as I build my applications and making each piece of that pipe as simple as possible with an input and an output that make a lot of sense. One of the things that was missing was the connections between those pipes. And as a result, we would often define variables for each result of each function. If this proposal goes through, no longer. Because the pipeline operator is now at stage two. I am so, 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 so hyped about this. Y'all have no idea. What the pipeline operator does is it takes the value from the function above and it pipes it in to whatever you call with the percentage next. So if I want to take a value here and then pipe it into the next section, I can do that trivially. Let me just open up VS Code. Do I have it open? Say const do something x number. And the goal here is to add two to x and then square it. But instead of just doing return x plus two to the power of two, which I could do, like this works, but let's say I don't know the de implementation details of those functions and I have const add to const square and I want to use both of these. The way we would do this before we had pipeline operators was const temp equals add to x return square temp. We could also return square add to of x. But most importantly, this is where things get fun, piped. If this proposal goes through, we'll be able to return add to x square percent. This is going to type error because this isn't a real thing. And I'd also be able to break this out into a new line, which is super cool. Percent is not the final choice. They might do other things for that. But the point here is this tells the compiler, hey, take whatever happened right before and pass that as an input to the next thing. And this lets you very quickly pass values through if you want to do a bunch of different things. Like, let's say we want to square this three times, which is not too uncommon that you might want to call a function multiple times or call different functions. If I wanted to do the, that here, I'd have to make another temp value or I would, here's how I would probably actually do it. Let temp is add to temp equals square temp, temp equals square temp, and then I return temp. I want to do three, so there. Could also surround this three times. So obviously the objective best solution is this one because it's only one line and all the others are more lines. But in reality, this is kind of like trailing commas where it's way easier to append things to the end. Better to start with the variable. I actually like that. So return x add to percent. I like this a lot. And I'm so hyped that we'll be able to write our code in this way in the near future. It makes portability of things, makes reusability of things, and it makes our patterns writing functional code way simpler. Somebody said, so they basically reinvented let. Where is a variable being bound here? No, it's actually a significant difference here in that we're not allocating memory to a variable when we do this. We are storing the resulting value and immediately piping it into the next function. This is, this is let is a way to get a value you can reassign. Pipe is a way to avoid getting or reassigning a value when you just wanna get a new value. <laughs> Did I say this is a new invention? This isn't a new invention. This is a common pattern that's existed in a lot of different programming languages. I learned it in Elixir because I'm a big Elixir nerd. And the value here is absurd. I've had so many programs where I have like one function that literally just pipes 15 things in a row right after. And it's so readable, so easy to work with. It, it just makes life so much better as a functional programmer. I am so hyped that these changes might actually make it to JavaScript. I hope that TypeScript adopts these early because they, they tend to do little things like that. And I would be so hyped. I love what they're calling out here. Naming is one of the most difficult tasks in programming, and as such, the programmers will inevitably avoid naming variables when they perceive their benefit to be relatively small. Yeah. I, this is one of the coolest things about Tailwind as well. When developers aren't thinking about names, they're thinking about functions, they're thinking about effects, they're thinking about pipes, they're thinking about 
what your application actually does, they they move faster and they generally are happier. The less often they have to write equals and name things and do all that stuff, the faster they'll be, the happier they'll be, and the more time they're spending on the hard problems they love programming for. Programmers don't love naming things. Programmers love programming. Tools like Pipes let them program more and faster, and I'm really hyped to see them coming to JavaScript. Anyways, this is a fun rant. If you like these weird newsy thing that hasn't happened yet, but I'm hyped about it videos, please let me know in the comments so I do more of them. If for some reason you still haven't subscribed, please do. Button is there, I think. It's the white one now. Hit that. Less than half y'all are subbed. Helps us a bunch. Hit the like button if you don't mind. Thank you all again for watching this video. Thank you, Mir, for editing this one. And if there's a video in the corner here, it's probably because YouTube thinks you'll like it. You should give that one a click too.